Hey there, welcome to my kitchen where we are going to do a chemistry lab. This lab comes out of my chemistry lab book, which I put together. And the lab is called Like Dissolves Like. So we pretty much are just gonna mix stuff with water. We know that water is a polar molecule. The molecule is completely lopsided. We have hydrogens on one side and then the oxygen here with two lone pairs. And those two lone pairs make the molecule lopsided. The lone pairs are very negative and the hydrogens are very positive. So knowing that water is a polar molecule, we are going to test some things in my kitchen to find out if they are polar or nonpolar and record the results. Now, um, Anything that mixes with water is going to also be polar. Even if I don't know what the Lewis structure is, if it mixes with water, I know that it's polar because like dissolves like. Things that are polar are going to dissolve in things that are polar and things that are nonpolar will not dissolve in polar solvents like water. It's super important to be careful with what chemicals you actually use here. Um, mixing chemicals with water, household chemicals, typically is not gonna be a problem. You should still check the SDS sheet on all of these chemicals just to make sure. Um, the real issue is gonna come from your waste beaker. If you are just dumping all of this into like a holding beaker, you're gonna have a bunch of chemicals accumulate. Um, even just dumping them down the drain, some of them should not be jump, dumped down the drain and others should have water run behind them so that you don't have one chemical interacting with another one inside your drain. So make sure again to read the SDS on all the chemicals that you choose to mix with water for this lab. All right, here I have a big beaker full of water and here I have a small beaker full of vinegar. I know they look completely identical. Um, that's just because vinegar uh, looks like water. You're gonna have to trust me that it's vinegar. Um, so what I'm gonna do first in my Erlenmeyer flask is drop in some water and then some vinegar and then we're gonna check to see if they are miscible or if they blend or if they mix well. All right, vinegar is gonna go, I'm sorry, the water's gonna go in first. I just need enough in here, I'm not measuring anything. I just need enough to make sure that I can actually see the results of this test. And then I'm gonna add the vinegar. And I'm just gonna give it a little swirl, probably help them out just a little bit. And it is very clear that these two sol solutions mix very well. So there is no identifiable layers to this. Um, so this is a now diluted sample of vinegar. This indicates that vinegar must be polar. All right, next up, we are going to try some rubbing alcohol. This is 91% rubbing alcohol, meaning it is 9% water. So, um, Rubbing alcohol also comes in 70%, which is 30% water. We don't necessarily want to use that one just because water, of course, is going to mix with water. Um, if you are working in a real chemistry lab, you may be able to get 100% rubbing alcohol. I don't want to overfill this. I don't want to use too much for our tests. I have to wipe this counter, of course. Um, so that's the rubbing alcohol. And we are going to mix that with the water. I can kind of see a little bit here. Uh, it almost looks like it's stringy, which is a very strange thing to say. Um, but, I, oof, that's stinky. I'm going to give it a swirl. And with just a little help, we get, we get no, no layers. So rubbing alcohol is polar. Next up, we're gonna try some kitchen olive oil. I'm sure you can predict the results here, but we are gonna check it out anyway. So I'm gonna add some water and probably shouldn't do this. Go straight from the cooking glass to my chemistry glass, but I personally don't mind, but still this is not proper protocol. You should not do this. Um, so I'm adding this and as I'm adding it, I can see that definitely this is not wanting to mix. Actually, it was really cool to watch it. Um, the oil blobs kind of were small and individual. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Do you see that guy on the bottom? 
that bubble right there is a little glob of oil and he's just, he's trying to get up to the top. Come on, buddy, that's given you. Oh my goodness, he's so funny looking. Um, clearly this is non-polar. It's kind of like you can see the, the layer of the oil on the top. Give this guy a swirl. He's stuck to the bottom. Oh my goodness, this has never happened to me before. This is so cool. <laughs> kind of there. You can't see them very much right now. But all those little oil bubbles on the top are going to glob together if you let it sit long enough. They're all going to glob together and make one big blob of oil. But that's just olive oil for my kitchen. Really any cooking oil should do this with the same result. Whether that's peanut or corn oil, um, vegetable oil even. I don't keep vegetable oil in my house very good for you. Um, but there you have it. Those are the oil globs. Clearly they don't want to mix with the water. So really what's happening here is that all of those little oil particles are clinging to each other because they don't want to touch the water. So there you have it. There's your non-polar sample. How cool is that? These flow to the top because they're less dense, but they don't mix because water's polar and oil is non-polar. All right, next up, we are gonna try some acetone, which is nail polish remover. This is pure acetone. Pure acetone, 100% acetone, will like melt paint off of stuff. Um, it will melt a styrofoam cup, so be very careful with it. Um, so I just am gonna use a little bit here, just because it's like pretty gnarly. Just like the alcohol, it's kind of mixing in here, like a little bit stringy. Oof, that smells. But there you have it. It makes no layers, no bubbles like we saw with the oil. So acetone, polar. Next up, we're going to use some witch hazel, which is a common name for a chemical, but I don't even know what its chemical formula is. So I am going to be surprised by the results same as you um i use this on my face it's actually a toner kind of helps to like remove oil from your face so on that alone makes me think um it might be like an alcoholish type thing again i don't want to use too much because i actually really like this stuff <laughs> okay there's my witch hazel and it is going to go into this beaker and this is 100% witch hazel, by the way. It's not mixed with anything. Sometimes they mix it with rubbing alcohol. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Beautifully mixed. That is polar. Another way that I could test that um, is with food coloring. So many of us have used food coloring before. Food coloring mixes with water. That makes it polar. So if I um, am struggling to kind of figure this out, I can just add a drop of the food coloring and if it mixes with only the water but leaves the witch hazel clear like in its natural color well colorless rather um then that's another way to help if something is kind of difficult to see but this has turned the entire sample blue meaning that i now have three polar things in here water the food coloring and the witch hazel Next up, I have some ammonia in the house. I probably should not even be that close to it. It's very stinky. Um, ammonia's formula is NH3. It is technically nitrogen trihydride, but we often refer to it as its common name, which is ammonia. Uh, if you have it in your house, you're probably using it for cleaning. And we are gonna try again. So we have some water here. I'm gonna throw this, well not throw, I'm gonna pour it in the Erlenmeyer flask. And then I'm gonna add in some ammonia, being careful not to splash, of course, and we're gonna check that out. It looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna give it a swirl, just to be sure. Sometimes they need help blending and other times they need help separating. Um, so here we go. That is water and ammonia, totally one layer, meaning just like we thought, uh, ammonia is a polar molecule. 
Now, if we draw the Lewis structure for ammonia, it kind of looks like the T-shape with nitrogen in the middle and then a lone pair, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. Um, it doesn't actually come out as a T-shape in three dimensions. It actually kind of looks like a tripod. So you'll have the three hydrogens pointing down and then that extra lone pair pointing straight up. And that is going to, the lone pair is going to make that region of the molecule very negative. The hydrogens together make the positive and there you have a polar molecule. The last one we're going to test is glycerin, which is a uh, common ingredient in a lot of beauty products and lotions. Um, this is it in the bottle. You may have this in your medicine cabinet. Very thick in this beaker. I'm sure you can make a prediction here. Ew, that was really gross looking. And it's pretty cloudy. I'm gonna give this a minute. I think I'm gonna use the food coloring trick on this because I'm having a difficult time telling. Wow, I really did not anticipate that. It looks like the glycerin is polar. Very interesting. Um, I think it's probably important to note that this is called anhydrous glycerin. <laughs> anhydrous means that it has been dehydrated, meaning that it actually kind of likes water. So there we have it. <laughs> um, some other things that you can test out aside from just this um, straight up water test it's just notice any time that you're cooking, especially if you're cooking some type of meat that's going to have a fat in your crock pot. Perhaps if you're making um, tomato sauce or a soup, a lot of the time fat will rise. That's because fat is a giant nonpolar molecule and it's usually in a water base, which is polar, of course. And the one that's going to rise to the top, just like we saw in the oil, is the one that is less dense. That's what causes it to rise up and the things that are more dense will sink down to the bottom but the reason they don't mix entirely is because of their polarity so uh let me know in the comment section what you tested with water to find its polarity um and i think that's it just make sure to make this lab very safe look up the sds on everything and that's it happy labbing